Malaysia is a beautiful country with outstanding natural heritage and an obvious need for economic growth. Is there a way to balance between the two? Sustainable management of natural resources. A vast green blanket covers the island of Borneo. What to the untrained eye might look like a jungle is in reality a plantation and it's dominated by a single species, the oil palm. Palm oil obtained from palm fruit is found in about 50% of all supermarket goods. The oil palm is clearly an important source of income, contributing to the economic growth of countries like Indonesia and Malaysia. At the same time, plantations, construction and roads are devastating tropical rainforests. Species endemic to Borneo are being lost. And like the oil palm, ancient rainforests have an economic value that local people can benefit from. How? A very special animal holds the answer. The Sabah rhino lives in the jungles of northeastern Borneo. It's one of the most endangered mammals in the world. Less than 50 individuals survive in the wild, and Malaysia is aware of its dire situation. It's not just about uh, Malaysians losing a rhino. It's about humanity losing a rhino. Profits from the plantations are immediate, but nature conservation needs investment. Why bother with an animal like the Sabah rhino? Well, these animals are special, really, when you work with them and you see them, how unique they are. I had the possibility to scratch them a little bit and uh, this was a fascination I never will forget. Sustainable management can lead to miracles and turn habitat protection and biodiversity into profitable businesses. Malaysia already has proof of this. When this tree was a seedling, nobody in the world knew about this place. But now the tree has become the Sepilok giant. It's funny because no one ever realized that a place like this would turn into, um, now I would say, a tourist destination. The Sepilok Orangutan Sanctuary and Rehabilitation Center attracts more than 100,000 visitors per year. The orangutans not only protect one of the last primary lowland rainforests in Sabah, but the orangutans also create jobs and the investment needed to run the center. When tourists come over to Sabah is because they want to see nature at its best, with pristine jungle. If the Sabah rhinos breed successfully, the rhino sanctuary in Tabin can soon become a top-notch tourist destination, just like Sepilok. The sanctuary can provide many jobs for locals seeking employment. The, the imperative now is we have to force, force, as it were, force all the rhinos to breed if they can. So far, all natural breeding attempts have failed. To bring back the Sabah rhino from the verge of extinction, Malaysia looked for outside help. With the support of the German Federal Ministry for Education and Research, an international team of scientists joined the conservation efforts of the Sabah government. Conservation is a global issue, so we have to inform everyone. They're here to promote breeding using cutting-edge assisted reproduction techniques. Scientists of the Leibniz Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research hold the highest standards in the field of reproduction biology and do whatever possible with captive animals. At the same time, other scientific teams are helping to identify areas of high diversity. So it's no use setting up a beautiful conservation project that is not supported by the local community because it won't last. Information centers and education programs help kids, stakeholders of the future. With the help of the internet, the Sabah Rhino project collected thousands of fans. 
by now, school children, not only in Malaysia, but as far away as Germany, know about the Saba rhino and are aware of its importance. Still, the question remains, can a shy, four-legged, hairy rhino become an ambassador of Borneo? If you have the chance to look into its eyes and hear what it's telling you, then you will know that the answer is yes. Join and support the Sabah Rhino Project. Go to Facebook, become a friend. TamTam -tam is there, waiting for your click. <laughs>